Welcome to the Soapbox Podcast, where we will focus on putting what you do and how you do it front and center. We'll be spotlighting entrepreneurs, artists, nonprofits, and more. So sit back, get comfortable, and hear all about it. Thank you so much for joining us, Kayetta Zuckerman. We really appreciate you coming to the Soapbox today. The title for today's show is Getting It Done, Being a Mother. And if there's anybody out here who's been a mother or a mother figure, we all know that it's very difficult trying to balance life, work, children, activities, doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, growth spurts, attitudes, personalities, and all of the above that comes with um, living a, a life of a mother or the mother figures that some of us have adopted. Knowing Kayetta has given me a new resound sense of, like, I know under no circumstances because I could have been a great mother like she is. I only have one child. Kayetta mm-hmm. has been blessed to have five children and one with a, I mean, a set of a twins. But to have five children and to be the sole provider for five children. So, Kayetta, I just want to welcome you to the show today. Again, the title was Getting It Done, Being a Mother. Thanks for joining us. How are you today, Kayetta? I am good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. So I'm going to ask you a few questions because I'm curious to, like, how in the world do you get life done? I've known Kayetta for several years, and I know since I've known her, I want to say she averages working at least two jobs consistently, (laughs) raising her children, Go hey look goes out of the country. She has a social life, but keeping everything balanced and making sure that her children's life is balanced. And so I applaud her for all that she does because the thing about being a mother, the time that you spend with your children, of course, is paramount. But the time that you spend for yourself to keep yourself balanced is even more paramount because if you don't do it for yourself and you're just pouring a 1,000% in your children, they won't have balanced lives because attitudes, anxiety, frustration, uh-huh. anger, you know, will pop off every time you, you talk to your kid. So uh-huh. growing up, what did you envision motherhood to be like? Like what did that look like for you? Okay, can I be completely transparent? Of course. Growing up, I did not envision myself being a mother, period. <laughs> I never envisioned myself being being a mother, and I think I never envisioned that based upon my childhood and how I seen the struggle that my mom went through with this raising too. So I never quite envisioned being a mother, but unfortunately, I was I was here doing things that caused me to be a mother. So, right. um, yeah. So, life so I'm I'm a Yes, right. So, I mean, I'm a mom, but, I mean, after um, being blessed with having children, I just envision me raising them, like, totally different than how I was raised in reference to I always wanted to make sure that my children had structure. I also wanted to make sure they always had uh, a place to live at all times. That was one thing that I dealt with with growing up is my mom was having, she had mental issues like depression and things of that nature, so she wasn't able to always function properly, so to speak, like everybody else. So it was been times where we were evicted, and then I went and stayed with my dad. We were evicted there. So, like, I literally, like, lived all over the place. So always wanted to make sure that my children had a stable environment at all times. Um, they never had to live with anybody. They never had to need to go outside of me for anything that they needed. Of course, by me being a single mother of five, it was a little hard to cover all of their wants. But, right. um, <laughs> yeah, but because I was able to, I worked, like, extremely hard to make sure that they were taken care of at all times. My children, I see them as being a bit spoiled for me to be a single mother of five, and they've experienced a lot. <laughs> 
So um, I never like really envisioned myself being a mother growing up, but um, as I as I had my children, I just wanted to make sure I kept them safe at all times and make sure that they had everything they needed and they had a structure and stable environment at all times. So that was my envisionment after I had my children. I made sure I did that. <laughs> okay, okay, and that that makes perfect sense. I mean, of course, is 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 the two roads that we have in life is the life that we are accustomed to is the life that we want to change to make things better that, you know, like when we were growing up, the things that we didn't have or, you know, the things that we wanted to see change to be better. And so I'm just, you know, glad that you were able to to champion that and to take that on mm-hmm. with, you know, with such a heavy load. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. sometimes it could just mm-hmm. be that you had the two and you were able to do that, but to have the five and still do it is remarkable. Mm-hmm. And so – what do you think is the most rewarding in raising children? To me, they're like little mini me. Of course, the DNA is strong, so I see some of their their fathers in them. <laughs> I do see some of their fathers in them. <laughs> but what's rewarding to me in reference to my children, seeing them how they're growing up, they picked up on my work ethic, and um, okay. they know I'm a hard worker, and they know. Regardless, whatever the situation is, I get it done. Doesn't matter what it is. It may be a little stressful, a little struggle, but I still get over the hurdle and I get it done. And I, I look at them. They have, they do like, especially my adult ones. They have my young adult ones. They have a little challenging um, times. Well, definitely my daughter. She calls and talks to me, and she's frustrated at work and things of that nature. But I love her work ethic that she picked up from me. I love that she's a go-getter. I love that she just doesn't let grass grow under her feet. She doesn't let anything stop her. She just still just keeps it moving, whatever is going on. And that I know for a fact that that comes from me. So that's rewarding from, for me. Yes, children can be a headache, especially teenagers, and they can get on your nerves. But the fact that they're able to pick up something from you and something positive from you along the way, exactly. that's rewarding for me. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. And that is very rewarding because a lot of times, you know, like kids will tend to pick up the negative things that a parent does, and that mm-hmm. is like the cast over their lives into adulthood or late yep. adulthood, and then blame their parents mm-hmm. until their late 40s and 50s. So it's good mm-hmm. that, you know, as a teenager – a young adult, she's able to, you know, start her course in life. And your other children, I know they're not working because they're a little bit younger, but to start their course in life and, you know, a positive Oh, man. oh they working. They working, Rosha. <laughs> the 13-year-old? Yes. Yeah, I have them working with me on my other part-time job. Yes, because I have three part-time oh, jobs okay. now. Okay. I mean, two part yeah. So then I have right. them okay. going with me. Yeah. So they, okay. she works too. She, yeah, and I just pay her for my income. But yes, I do have them working. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, of course, yeah. we, we always look at what's the positive. So now we're going to just turn it just a tad to ask what, what do you think the most challenging thing is about raising children? Like, what's your most uh, you know, heaviest defeat that you deal with? The heaviest defeat that I deal with is the lack of support that I have from their fathers in reference to nurturing them, in reference to supporting me in in regards to, like, discipline and education, things of that nature. There is a lack of support. So even though they may, like, necessarily not be angry at me at a certain you know, at a certain point in time, they may be angry at the other parent, but because I'm here and I'm here all the time, I get the blunt of everything, and that is the most challenging. Right. Because right. not only am I dealing right. with my emotions in reference to not having that support that I know they need, but I'm also dealing with their emotions as well. So in reference to them not having their fathers be active in their lives. So um, I think that's the most challenging for me because it's a lot. Because it's like you're taking, to me, it's like you're taking on 
the whole world because it's like right. you're taking on, yeah, dealing with stuff with yourself, dealing with stuff with your children, dealing with stuff at work, dealing with stuff. It's just, it's just, it's like this, you have the world on your shoulders at that right. particular time. So that is the most, yeah, I think, I, I think I can definitely say that is extremely challenging for me. <laughs> And, you know, and I, yeah. I can, I mean, of course, you know, you know, I, I was a mother that was single, only had the one child. But what I used to reference to his father is that um, I can't teach him how to pee standing up. And so mm-hmm. I would say that often because I'm like, I, don't, I can't teach him boy slash teen boy slash man stuff. Like, I can't teach him that. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. I can't be the disciplinarian and the nurturer. I can't be both. Mm-hmm. I can't, like... It was just, it would just become, I would become unbalanced. And, you know, like, oh, my gosh, I feel like I'm going to pull in a million pieces, and I only had the one. So yeah. I get it. Like, it's, it's, a hard, it's a hard thing to do. But one of the things I had to do to keep everything, you know, in order and form is just to be consistent. I was like, I don't care what else, I don't care if I don't do nothing else. Keep a roof over your head, and I'm going to be consistent. So whether it was discipline, whether it was activities, whether it was you need to go to work, whatever it was, it was going to be consistent. It wasn't going to be no, that you don't have to do it today. Mm-mm. It's going to be consistent. So I know, mm-hmm. I, trust me, I get it. <laughs> and I think I, I struggle with the, um, the discipline part because as women, as mothers, we're the nurturers. So it's like right. I struggle with the discipline part because I'm like, oh, my gosh, I got to really – like parent to you right now because you acting crazy. So now I got act crazy, but I love you. But if I don't do this, then right. it's <laughs> so that that exactly. that was yeah that bothered me because I'm like and then now I'm looked at as being the bad person as a whole because mommy's supposed to you know coddle me. Oh baby, it's gonna be okay. But mommy's gonna have to you know put the the smack down on you sometimes as soon as you get out of hand. <laughs> Because right. it's just me. Right. So um, I really, really, really struggled with that part of raising my children as far as discipline because I didn't want them to just see me as a person of, I'm just disciplining you. I want you to also see that I'm a nurturer, yes, but I'm also, if you, you get out of hand or get out of line, I'm going to have to put you back in place. So mommy still loves you, but right. this is what it is. So. That's that's why I say in reference to not having the support that I need. It, I think it would be a little more different if I had the support from the other parent, you know, to kind of balance it out. But that's that's right. definitely my my biggest struggle in reference to raising them. So, what expectations did you have as a mother that has not been fulfilled? Oh, that's a good question. I don't think it's just one thing. I always feel like I can just do more for them. <laughs> I don't, I don't, it, it's not like one particular thing. I think it's like several things. Like, I've always, like, wanted my children to be, like, in maybe a private school or something like that, getting the best education. Granted, public schools can, you know, they have some good teachers and things of that nature. But I just wanted them to have a, like, great education. And I was like, if I do that, then we're going to be really living in the pool house because I can't pay for school and this and this and that <laughs> all at the same time. Right. So, yeah, so I think, like, with the education part of um, them, even though they're all pretty much great in school, um, except for my twin boy, he had a little bit of challenges, but I'm still working with him on that. But okay. I just, um, yeah, I just wanted, I always wanted, like, the best for my children. So right, right. I think that's that's really what it is. And I just feel like even as my young adults and they're no longer in my home, but I felt like if there was there's still more things that I could well, I still kinda guide and support my daughter, but I still feel like my son could have got more from me that he needed or before he actually like got out into the world. So I feel like right. as a mother in that part of it. I don't I don't feel like I really fulfilled that portion of it. Um yeah, I that's I, that's my biggest thing. I just want to make sure 
that they have everything, all of the necessities in reference to life, even though I'm not going to be able to give them everything in reference to life because there's always something new, you know. Right. I just want to make sure that they're fully prepared before they actually go out into the world because it's rough and it's actually, I think, worse now than yeah. it was when we were growing up. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the only thing. <laughs> So what advice would you give someone who is thinking about being a mother? Okay, so we said we're going to be transparent. I'm going to be transparent all the way. (laughs) The advice that I would give to somebody that's (laughs) thinking about being a mother is just to be careful who you decide to have children with. That's the only thing. Like, I feel like people nowadays are getting married for the wrong reasons. And just because you're married, and you have a child with that person, you can still be married and have a child with that person and still be like you're single because you're still the only right. person there that's supporting that child or, you know, doing everything on a regular basis. But you're married, but you still feel single. So that's why I said is just be careful who you decide to have children with. That's the only thing I could, I could definitely say because, I, I feel like it's harder now raising children than it was then, and you need that support. I have, outside of my children's father, I have support from some family, and I have support from extended family, a lot of support from my extended family, um, because it, do, it definitely does take a village. That's, like, literal. It really does take a village to raise a child, and let alone to have five children. It definitely takes a village. So you just want to make sure that you have the su- support that you need because at times it can be mentally draining. And um, of course, mm-hmm. because you're mentally drained, it's a way on your physical aspect and you could be drained physically also. So and then I just, it's just like with that, <laughs> just make sure you select the right person. Like, make sure the person is family-oriented, pay attention to how they treat their mother, children, things of that nature, because DNA is real. So, <laughs> True. yeah, so DNA is real. So I just just make sure that you select the right mate and you have a support system. That's the advice I could give. Okay. So let me ask you this question, because, um, in which we didn't mention at the top of the show, but Kayetta's children range from 21, 19, she has a set of twins that are 16, and a 13-year-old. How do you balance work, leisure, and motherhood with not only five children, but their age ranges? Ooh, it's hard. Oh. <laughs> it is hard. Uh, I got that village. I definitely have that, so that's one way I'm able to uh, – <laughs> That's one way I'm able to balance, but <laughs> I feel like sometimes I'm, like, mentally drained with work, the children, and other things. I also have a therapist that I go to, so if it becomes too much, and unfortunately, in black communities, they look down on, you know, therapy and, you know, things of that nature, but it, it really is helpful, because at some points in time, as I'm raising my children, I don't always feel like I'm doing the right thing in reference to raising them because, of course, there's no real handbook to raising children. So I always second guess myself or I feel like I'm not doing enough when I am doing enough. And it's like, what is actually enough? So I'm always down on myself in reference to raising them because I feel like that I'm not doing enough for them, even though everybody else that looks in the round like, you're doing more than enough, some kids got, you know, more than what they would normally have. And so in order to keep myself sane, I go to counseling, I do that. And like right. I said, I, all, I just tap into my support system for like anything. So <laughs> I have a good support system and, um, they're good, with, they're good with working with me in reference to, because I have so many jobs, if they, one person need to be picked up, as I think before COVID hit, I had one in cheerleading, and the other one was, I think, doing football or something. So I would have to run from one place to another place, or I would have my sister go get 
the other one from another place. So that's why I say it's important to have a good support system. (laughs) So that's how I, um, you know, kind of balance that out. I mean, I, I work a lot, but because I work a lot, I'm able to enjoy the fruits of my labor also. So it's not like just work, 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 work. Right. I'm, yeah, I'm still able to right. socialize and travel and do the things that I love. So, yeah, I work. And I take care of the children, but I'm going to need some me time so I can gather myself and make right. sure I'm good. <laughs> yeah, so that's my balance. Absolutely. And that's, then that's, what actually, that's what actually is a balance in anything. If it's all spending mm-hmm. money, if it's all eating, if it's all just being totally like a mother or – you know, drinking or whatever, whatever you all Mm -hmm. are doing one thing in and no balance is just never stable. So Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you've adopted, you know, that mentality and that attitude to balance life as a mother and keeping, you know, keeping things moving. Mm -hmm. So what, so what does reward and punishment look like at home? Because I know you've mentioned several times, like, I feel like I'm not giving them enough. I give them enough, but I don't feel like I'm giving them enough. So what does like reward and punishment mean? Like, how does that look at home? Okay, so I'm big on education. A good report card for me is A's and B's. So I give them money for A's and B's. If they get uh, below that, they don't get a, they don't get anything. Um, if they're not doing what they're supposed to do in school in reference to keeping up with homework or things of that nature, I remove things. No cell phones, no games. Of course, nowadays, kids like to be on video games. No games. One likes to visit her godmother so often, and that's like the, the fun place. So sometimes I have to cut that back so that we can kind of reel it back in. And that actually kind of works because um, when my 13-year-old, her grades had dropped tremendously, so I had cut a lot of things out. Like she had no cell phone. She wasn't able to watch TV. She wasn't able to go over her godmother's house. I think it was like a span of a month and a half, I believe. Listen, that last mm-hmm. quarter, that chick had straight A's. <laughs> wow. Yeah, straight A's. She knew I wasn't playing. <laughs> right. Yeah, so she had wow. straight A's. So it's like you, you give them those things, and those things are not like, oh, this is because you're supposed to have it. No, that's a privilege. So if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, I have to remove that privilege from you until you earn it back. And I I teach them that right. this is how the real world works. If you do something you know, you you're not supposed to do, there's a consequence. Like if you're at work and you're not doing your right. job, they either gonna fire you or you're not gonna get paid. So yeah, this is I'm just kind of preparing them for the real thing. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's what the punishment looks like in my own. <laughs> the hardest part is not saying what the um, reward and punishment is going to be, it's being consistent. That's mm-hmm. the hardest part. Like, today I don't really feel like it. I had a rough day at work. I had a headache. Go ahead and watch TV. Marga, go ahead. Just go ahead. And then it just uh-uh. starts a cycle where they don't learn it. So being consistent and being, like, you know, steadfast and putting my foot down, don't come to me about that TV. No, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Not until X Don't even ask. Don't even ask. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's good. Um, I'm glad that you, you know, you've instituted that because it does, it does show when they go in public, when they, you know, become teenagers, when they start working. Yep. They already have that, um, you know, those types of tools in place. If I don't do what I'm supposed to do, this is what's going to happen. Exactly. Yep. Like, okay, go ahead. I'm going to let you get away with it this time. So that's good. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So what have you learned about yourself as being a, a mother? That I'm resilient. Okay. Um, to be honest, it's crazy because going through some of the things I have gone through growing up and going through some of the things I have gone, gone through raising them, I just think, like, some people would have just, like, threw in a towel a long time ago, and I'm still, like, by the grace of God, I'm still pushing through. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, okay, right. <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> yeah, so it, 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 it's, it's hard, but I'm like, it can be done. So it's like right. I don't see where I can have an excuse or of, of not doing it. It can be done. So you just do it. Right. So and it's, again, a yeah. mindset. 
and you got to keep your mindset focused on whatever your targeted goal is. Mm-hmm. is. Resiliency is always good. Mm-hmm. And so how this is like this is one of the questions that I probably should have asked. This should have been one of the first questions I asked. Like how do you keep up with all the different personalities? Like how do you? Because I know no child is alike, and I know parents. Do like, they not? Not at all. <laughs> right. I don't have a favorite, and you know, like how do you keep all of those personalities in check? That's an interesting question. Uh, I just kind of meet them where they are. If that makes any sense. Like, if they do something, I can't punish them all the same because all of them may not receive it the same way. So you have to just kind of think outside the box. Like, my twin daughter, her personality is much like mine. And so I see that in her. And when she, like, um, responds to me that I know how I probably would have responded to somebody else, I kind of chuckle because I'm like, Oh man, I really messed up with this. <laughs> like she must have felt like picked that up somewhere along the line, and it's like I gotta laugh because I'm like I see her in me so much, and it's like oh my gosh, really. So because I see myself in her, and that's my she literally has my personality. I see myself in her, so at times when I'm dealing with her in reference to talking to her, whether it's positive or negative, because, or especially if it's negative, because I'm seeing something that I know I would respond to or do, I kind of not only do I check her, but I also check me because I'm like, dang, that's me. So I, I look at myself and I check myself. And so when I'm, you know, discussing something with her, I'm, I'll give her, like, examples on or why you shouldn't do that or why you shouldn't respond this way. And I'll give her, like, real-life experience that I've gone through in reference to responding to something negative. And in the positive aspect, um, now, this is the only thing that she doesn't have in reference to her personality is communicating. She's not big on communicating. I'm very vocal. So I have to, by her being in the workforce now, I've been kind of training her to be like, hey, you need to kind of say something. Mommy's not going to be able to speak up for you all the time. You you know, you're going to have to, if you don't like how something's going on, you can speak up. Just make sure that you're being respectful and professional at all, at all times. I know that my oldest daughter, she'll speak up and say something. She's very strategic at how she um, responds to stuff, and she's very, um, you know, professional and respectful. So I guess by watching me and how I react to certain things in public, she picked up on that. So I know dealing with her, she gets uh, a little off sometimes, and she'll be a little off place, and she'll be like, oh, they did this, this, and I'm like, girl, call me a story. That is not that serious for you to be getting upset. So I kind of meet them where they are. At the, yeah, so I'm just like, right. I got to kind of meet them where they are at that particular time. Because I know that every situation that they, they go through is going to be different. And then not only that, they all, they all respond to certain situations differently as well. Differently. So, yeah, yeah it's, it, it could be a struggle, but not so much. I think as parents, because we're so, and as mothers, we're so used to protecting our children that if something negative does happen to them, we're so used to jumping and just protecting them. But... I try to, now I get myself in the mindset of actually listening to what they're saying and listening to what's going on before I provide them a response to a certain situation or anything like that so that they can, you know, handle things in a healthy manner. Yeah, that makes sense. That's good. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Teaching accountability, responsibility, all of the abilities to make them, you know, stronger individuals moving forward in life, which is always the best thing because I I used to tell my son, and I still tell him, like, he, you know, Mom, why this? I'm like, don't worry about it. You'll thank me when you're 30. Just get a job. Mm -hmm. Because we know we live life looking backwards, like, oh, my gosh, I should have did this different, that different, Mm -hmm. this different. So I just always tell him, don't worry about it. Just get it done. You'll thank me when you're 30. So. Exactly. Waiting for that. Thank you. <laughs> waiting for my thank exactly. you. Exactly. Yep. Well, Kai, yep. Ada, this is like part of our discussion that is always so bittersweet to me. It's the end. 
But I want to thank you for joining me today on the soapbox. I really, really appreciated all of your insight, all of your transparency and talking to, to individuals about motherhood or those who are thinking about being mothers. And I really appreciate you taking the time out to um, to talk to me. I really appreciate that, to talk to me and um, the audience about, you know, just being balanced, being focused, being resilient, you know, and being a responsible parent, learning from life that you, you know, grew up in and making sure that you were determined to change that life for your children. But before we go, I have one last question I want to ask you. I know this to be true. Okay. I know this to be true. I know that through life we're going to have challenges. And I know that through those challenges, you should receive some type of growth, meaning that through everything you go through, whether it's, whether it's positive or negative, you should receive something from it. Because if you don't receive something from anything that you're going through in life, then that means that you're just stagnant. And then you would kind of have to kind of figure out why you're still stuck in that same spot. So even like with life, um, I feel like uh, in having children, I know that it's important to make sure that you're whole before you are able to give any of yourself to anybody else. And that is, that is including your children. If you don't make sure that you're good right. and you're in a sound mind, meaning physically, meaning mentally, meaning emo- emotionally, then you're not going to be any good to, to you or nobody else. And that includes your children. Right. I do know that. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today on The Soapbox. Thanks again. I appreciate this. Thank you for tuning in to this month's Soapbox. We hope that you were introduced to something new, learned something you can share, and come back for our next episode to gain additional knowledge. In the meantime, stay connected with us on Facebook at Toiletry and Company or check us out at toiletryandcompany.org. That's toiletryandco.org. As our mission is to provide love, hope, and soap to the universe.